Hey everyone, Estrongol here and welcome to my quick guide on how to add equip sound effects to your custom armor. While it's not essential to make custom armor function, I do think it's a very important addition to make, uh, just so that it functions as close to vanilla-like as it can. So let's get started by looking at an armor's JSON in the behavior pack. This is what most armor pieces are going to look like, and it's very basic. The first thing we're going to be adding is a Minecraft on use component. Minecraft on use is going to pretty much let us run an event whenever an item is used. So in this is instance, whenever a player tries to equip its item, equip an item to an empty slot, it's going to play a sound effect. So let's go ahead and make the on use component. And then once we've done that, we're going to add an event section. Now in the event section, we're going to make an event, uh, which is going to have the same name as the event we're calling in the on use component. Um, and after we create this, we're actually going to be making it into a sequence event. Uh, this is going to let us use the very, very important condition segment to ensure that we don't have the sound playing every time the item is used, uh, even if it's an item that's unable to be equipped at the time. So let's say with like current custom armor, we have an iron helmet equipped, and I have my own custom helmet equipped. Uh, if I try and equip that uh, in 1.18, it uh, won't play the sound because we obviously can't equip that custom armor automatically. In the condition, we're going to need to check for vanilla armor in the same slot. We can do this using query.armor texture slot, which is going to take a armor slot index as a parameter, and it's going to return the texture type of the requested slot. The neat functionality of this is that we will be able to check to see if a player has nothing equipped in a specific slot. So what we're going to do is specify an argument of zero because that correlates with the uh, helmet slot. And then we, we're going to make sure it equals or it's the same as negative one. Now that we've made sure this works with vanilla items, we need to make sure it works with custom ones as well. To do this, we're going to be using the tag component. This is going to be give us an easy way to group all similar items together. So I'm just gonna come up to the top of my component section, add tag, I'm gonna specify it as runecraft because runecraft is the name of the add on this items for, and then helmet. And what I'm basically going to be doing on all of my custom items is adding this tag at the top. So for every helmet I have, I'm going to have this tag at the top of it, its component section. If it was a chest plate, I'd have a similar one where instead of helmet, it would be chest plate. But since this is a helmet, I'm going to keep it as helmet. Now that we've added this tag to the item, we're going to come back down to the sequence event where we are going to be modifying the condition slightly by adding a new query. The reason we need to do that is because query.armor texture slot only works for vanilla items. So we need an additional query to let us check for the custom items that we've added in. And to do that, we're going to be using query.equippedItemAnyTag. Query.equippedItemAnyTag is going to take a slot name followed by any tag we want uh, in the form of tag underscore name. And it's going to return zero if none of the tags are on that equipped item or one if at least one of the tags specified exists on that item. So let's go ahead and implement that. I'm going to do and and because I want them to join together. I'm going to do the not operator because I want to make sure that they don't have that item equipped. And I will do query equipped item any tag. And the first argument's going to be a slot. So I'm going to do slot armor dot head because I'm checking for the helmet. And the second argument is going to be the tag. So it's just going to be runecraft colon helmet. After we've done that, we just need to add a basic run command uh, setup that we would do in a normal event. So run command, command, and then we're just going to be doing a place sound command. Uh, I'm going to be using a custom uh, sound that I've added into my add-on. I'm going to specify at S. Uh, I'll put a list of all of the current like vanilla armor sounds uh, that you could use uh, up on the screen for you, just in case you need that. But once you've got that, it's pretty much done. Um, you should now have the capability to add sound effects to all of your custom armor when you equip them. 
Um, although there is something I do want to note uh, that will simplify what I have explained here in the future. So in the current betas, they've added the capability to auto-equip custom armor uh, and have it swap out with the equipped armor. So basically, they're giving us more functionality for custom armor that puts them closer to vanilla functionality. Uh, what this was basically going to mean is we'll no longer need uh, this whole condition. Uh, it's going to be completely unnecessary, and then we're also no longer going to need a sequence here because that will be unnecessary. Um, the reason it's going to be completely unnecessary is because uh, if it works like vanilla functionality, it will. Uh, anytime we interact with the item, it's going to automatically equip it, which means uh, we're going to want to play this sound effect. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. If you found it helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments, and I'll be happy to answer you. Thank you, and have a nice day. Bye-bye.